Mahoney County Board of Elections will hold a special board meeting of the members on the board on Tuesday, August 13th, 2024, at 4 p.m. in the boardroom of the Mahoney County Board of Elections Office, 345 Oak Hill Avenue, Youngstown, Ohio, 44502. Would the assistant director call the roll, please? Ms. Barger? Here. Mr. Beatrice? Here. Mr. Ron? Here. Ms. Gilpesta? Present. Would the vice chairwoman of the Board of Elections <coughs> please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have a moment of silence for our nation, please? Chair will now recognize a motion to approve the minutes of the August 6, 2024 regular board meeting. So moved. Motion made by Joyce, member Joyce Kilpest. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by um, uh, Vice Chairwoman Sandra Barger. Is there any comments, discussions, or concerns? Hearing none, would the Assistant Director call the roll? Ms. Barger? Yes. Mr. Beecher? Yes. Mr. Arant? Yes. Ms. Kilpest? Yes. The chairman's report. Okay, we have to certify the validity and sufficiency of nonpartisan candidates' petitions for the November 2024 election. Right, so you would have for state senator, 33rd district, Al Catrona, Republican, Marty Hume, Democrat. State representative, 59th district, Tex Fisher. Well, let's, let's take them one at a time. First of all, I thought this was of nonpartisan candidates. Oh, sorry, sorry, I did the wrong one. Okay, I apologize. A nonpartisan would be the judges, right? Correct. For judges, we have a report. I don't have a report. Yes. Yes. Joseph Hauser, term commencing 1 2 2025. Scott D. Hunter, term commencing 1 1 2025. And Molly K. Johnson, term commencing 1 3 2025. And there's three to all that, correct? Right. And we have only three petitions to run. Right. Fanny's mm -hmm. bringing the petitions if you'd like to see that. And that's category two. Oh, also state of board application. Hold on a second. Let's just regroup a second. We're on the uh, agenda item of nonpartisan candidates for the ballot. That's what we're looking at currently. Okay? The certify the validity and sufficiency of nonpartisan candidates' petitions for the November 2024 uh, general election. So this is the agenda that we published, and this is the agenda that we are going to follow. So the nonpartisan candidates are three judges and one member of the State Board of Education. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And what did we just get brought in by Danny? Petitions if you wanted to see them. It has the board, has our 
everyone looked at them and determined they're sufficient? Yes. Okay. The board, I mean, the chairman will now recognize a motion to accept the petitions for Joseph M. Hauser, term commencing 1 2 2025, Scott Hunter, term commencing 1 1 2025, and Molly K. Johnson, term commencing 1 3 2025. Is there a motion? No move. There's a motion made by member Joyce Kilpesta. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bob Arndt. Is there any questions, comments, or concerns by the members? Hearing none, would the assistant director call the roll, please? Ms. Barker? Yes. Mr. Beatrice? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Ms. Kilpesta? Yes. Annie, did we include Karen White in that list? No, we did. No, we didn't. Okay. So now, so now the board, the chair will now accept the motion to accept for the member of the Board of Education, the 8th District, Karen A. Lloyd. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a motion made by Vice Chairwoman Sandra Barger. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bob Arndt. Is there any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, would the, director call, would the Assistant Director call the roll, please? Ms. Barger? Yes. Mr. Beecher? Yes. Mr. Arant? Yes. Ms. Kalpesta? Yes. Okay, now, B on the agenda, which someone crossed off, will certify the validity and sufficiency of the nominating papers for independent joint candidates for president and vice president for the November 2024 general election. Is that not an item now on it our agenda? It is not an item. Okay, and why is it not an item on our agenda? Because we do not need to do that here. We, we do, do not need to. The secretary of okay. state. Item C under the chairman's report is certify the validity and sufficiency of the local liquor options, questions, and issues for the November 2024 general election. Now, we have a, a complete list, uh, one page, and then we have one that they didn't um, turn in enough signatures. Is that my understanding? So, if we can make an exhibit of the questions and issues and filing, that start with tax levies and then liquor options. Does the board see a need for us to do them individually or can we take them on bonk? Take them on bonk. Okay. Take them on bonk. Uh, on bonk, which is, this, which is this, and we'll make this an exhibit to the meeting minutes, please. Mm -hmm. And it starts with questions and issues filings for the November 5th, 2024 general election, and then it has liquor options underneath it. The chair will now recognize a motion to accept this exhibit and to accept these all on bond. So moved. There's a motion made by Vice Chairwoman Sandra Barger. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Joyce Kilpest. Is there any questions? I have a question. Has our staff looked at each one of these petitions and determined their sufficiency? Yes. Okay. Had enough signatures? Did everything correctly? Yes. Okay. Anyone else have any questions, comments, or concerns? Yes, sir. Hearing none, would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Barger? Yes. Mr. Beatrice? Yes. Mr. Arana? Yes. Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Then we have one petition for a liquor option that does not have the required number of signatures. It's Geno's West Prepped Wellness LLC, 901 Elm Street, Youngstown, Ohio, 44505. They needed 73 valid signatures, and we were only able to verify 68 signatures with 29 invalid. So we are going to invalidate that liquor option, is that my understanding? Yes. The chair will now recognize a motion to invalidate the liquor option for Geno's West Prep Wellness LLC, 901 Elm Street, Youngstown, Ohio, 44505. So moved. Motion made by Vice Chairwoman Sandra Barger. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bob Arndt. Is there any questions, comments, or concerns? My only question is they didn't have enough valid signatures, correct? Correct. All right. Does anyone else have any questions? Hearing none, would the director call? Would the assistant director call the roll, please? Ms. Barger. Yes. Mr. Beaters. Yes. Mr. Aron. Yes. Ms. Kelpes. Yes. Okay. Now moving to C. I mean D. <coughs> is the. is the certify the validity and sufficiencies of Form 289, Certificate of Candidacies, to fill vacancies on the board. 
And my suggestion is we first do for state senator and then secondly do for state representative. Does anyone have a problem with that? No. Okay. So does the, the chair will recognize a motion to accept for state senate 33rd district the petitions and the nominating petitions for Al Catrona the Republican and Marty Hume the Democrat. So moved. There's a motion made by the assist by the vice chairwoman Sandra Berger. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by member Joyce Kelpesta. Is there any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, would the assistant director call the roll, please? Ms. Berger? Yes. Mr. Beecher? Yes. Mr. Laurent? Yes. Ms. Kelpesta? Yes. Now, for state representative in the 59th district, it is my understanding that there is some problems with the petition. Is that my understanding, assistant director? Yes. Well, there was some question about the name. There was a name change, and the name change was not denoted on the form. I think you have a little packet there of what the concerns were and what the form what does that? Was. What does that packet look like, please? There's, there's several documents. It starts with this one. There's three of them. So after the bill. So there's an email, then there's a certificate certification of selection. These are the, these are the items I brought to the meeting. And then the voters registration. Let the record reflect that we have an email directed to Melissa Wasco, from Melissa Wasco to Ann Dominic, a protest filing attachment Fisher Exhibit PDF. It's from Chris Anderson. It's dated Monday, today's date, right? August 12th, or is today the 19th? My laws. It was dated yesterday at 345. I sent it to Annie today. Oh, okay. so she could give it to you. All right, that's why I'm getting confused. It says, hi there, please find the attached protest Ray Austin Fisher under Ohio Revised Code 3513.271. Mr. Fisher's nomination does not include his former name immediately following the legal name, nor does it meet any of the exceptions described by the ORC. Please let me know if there are any questions. Then there is a letter attached says, which I will read, Monday, August 12th, 2024, Dear Distinguished Board of Election Members, as a resident of the district, I write for you today to protest the certification of Austin James Texford Fisher to the November general election ballot. Mr. Fisher, who filed paperwork with Mahoney County Board of Elections on August 7th, did not comply with the Ohio Revised Code Section 3513.271 by failing to fist by failing to list his former name on the Ohio Secretary of State Form 289, his certification of selection of candidacy to fill the vacancy in a party nomination, Appendix A. Ohio Revised Code 2513.271, Appendix C states, quote, if any person desiring to be a candidate for public office has had a name change within five years immediately preceding the filing of his statement of candidacy, both his statement of candidacy and nominating petition must contain immediately following the person's present name the person's former names. In order to comply with the law, Mr. Fisher needed to list his change of name, which took place in 2020, Appendix B, and he, having signed the nominating paperwork, did not do that. I ask Mr. Fisher not be certified to the ballot and that you only certify the candidates who have properly completed the necessary paperwork. Attached is Exhibit A, which is selection, certification of selection of candidate to fill vacancy in party nomination. And it looks like 
the form that I guess the Mahoning and Columbiana County Republican parties filled out. Would that be correct? As it's, a it's, it's by all the counties, so there's three counties that agree and then they turn them into It says, no, I don't mm -hmm. think Carroll oh, yeah. County, you're confusing the no. states. You're just confusing. I'm just saying that there was more than one county that there was Mahoning and Columbia. Yeah. Right. Yes. Not, not, not any other county. Okay. And on the withdrawal of Al Patrona, um, it says that the members present and select Austin James Texford Fisher to be such candidate. And it says, I hereby accept the nomination of the Republican Party as a candidate for the 59th State Representative District, Mahoning County, and he signed. Then we have attached Exhibit B. Looks like a name change from the Mahoning County Probate Court. And then attached also is Ohio Revised Code 3513.271. I was mailed these items, and since I'm a lawyer, I did some research on my own. I will explain to the board what I found. 3513.271 also is reflected in 3513.06. They read exactly the same, and why they are different is beyond me. The 3513.271 and 3513.06 read the same way. And it looks like the same dates they were passed and has the exact same language. So why there are two sections with the same thing. Uh, the one is, they're both dated August, effective August 22nd, 1995. And the latest legislation was House Bill 99, 121st General Assembly. And it says change the name of candidate in 3513.06 and 3513.271. Name change within five years immediately preceding filing a statement of candidacy. Then, on my own, I did some research. I found a recent Supreme Court case in 2023, where the <clears throat> Ohio Supreme Court said at a meeting of the Fe and I'm quoting at a meeting of the February 7th board vote not to certify Gold's candidacy for the primary election ballot, the board determined that Revised Code 3513.06 required Gold to list his former name on his nominating petition because the name had occurred within the last five years. I then underline this. Was there a name change? And the court, Supreme Court said, with certain exceptions, not applicable in this case. Ohio Revised Code 3513.06 requires any person who has had a name change within five years immediately preceding the filing of a person's declaration of candidacy to include the person's former name on his declaration of candidacy and petition. By his own admission, Gold changed his name from David <coughs> Asaf Labs to Area Gold. I then decided to do some more research. And I found that this presents a unique issue for this board. This board, when we are determining validity of petitions, is to act in a non-partisan manner. We also all took an oath to follow the laws of the state of Ohio and the United States Constitution. So the question, as I see it, is, did he violate that section of the law by his nominating petitions um, when he filed them? And I find this to be a unique issue for the courts to resolve, but we are going my, my recommendation would be to set this for a hearing at a special meeting, hear from both sides, and make an informed decision timely enough so which either side is aggrieved 
can take us to the appropriate court to address this issue. Specifically, the, the law seems to be rather clear that this is a nominating petition, and as I read Ohio Revised Code, see people maybe do a lot of work today, and I have clients to take care of, they're very mad at me. As I read 3513.31, withdrawal, disqualification, or death of a candidate prior to election, if I go to 3513.31b, it says, if a person nominated in a primary election is a party candidate for the election at the next general election whose candidacy is to be submitted to the electors of a district comprised of more than one county, but less than all the counties of the state, withdraws as that candidate or is disqualified as that candidate under 3513.052 of the Ohio Revised Code, the vacancy in the party nomination so created shall be filled by the district committee of the major political party. Then it goes on to some other language, but here's what I underline. The certification must be accompanied by the written acceptance of the nomination by whose name is certified. A vacancy of party nomination may be filled by a minor political party shall be filed in accordance with the state rules as authorized by the officials of the party. Certification must be made as a manner provided for a major political party. Therefore, I think we should hold a hearing to determine whether or not the petitions for Austin Texford Fisher, did I get his name right? And I hate mispronouncing anyone's name because your name is the most important thing to you. And, and it, it, I guess we had some emails as Tex Fisher, whether or not he's in compliance with both Ohio Revised Code, two sections I cited before, which is um, 3513.271 and 3513.06. I think this is the best way to handle this. I think it's the best way to allow each side to inform us as to whether that's whether we can accept it or not, and and we can make a record, and then who's ever aggrieved by it or whatever can take it to the appropriate authorities. So I would suggest that we try to find a time this week, preferably, where we could have a meeting where each side can present whether or not they're in compliance with those two revised code sections. So could everyone look at their calendars, please? Good Friday afternoon. I'm not good Friday afternoon. Is anyone good Friday morning? No. No good Friday morning. I'm good Friday morning. Bob, are you good? I, don't, I would like the whole board to be here. I'm good Friday morning. Well, if you can move, I can move something if everybody else is, you want to do it at 9? Should I make a motion? Hold on. What is this? That's August 16th, right? Correct. Yeah. That's not good for me. Okay. Is Thursday good for anyone? Thursday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday morning? I get my hair done. Well, <laughs> I have to be. I have to be in court Friday morning. I can't tell. What time Friday morning? Nine o'clock. Well, then we don't have enough time Friday. I can make ten on Thursday. Can we reschedule the air appointment? Yes, I can reschedule my hair appointment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be in court at ten. So can we make it eight thirty in the morning? That would be fine. Um, what time? Thursday, August 15th, at 8.30 in the morning. I have to be in court at 10, so we'll give an hour. We'll give a half hour to each side. At this point, I think we need a motion to set a special meeting to hear from 
both sides on whether or not Tex Fisher complied with the uh, Ohio Revised Code Section 3513.271 and 3513.06. Uh, and we'll hold a special meeting and then we'll hear each side and make a decision and it'll go from there. What was the time we decided on? 8.30. On Thursday. On Thursday. Give Thursday, them each August a, give them a half hour each. The only item on the agenda will be um, the special meeting will consider whether or not Tex Fisher has complied with Ohio Revised Code sections 3513.271 and 3513.06. The most recent Supreme Court decision cites 3513.06, but I, 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 I would like to know why there's the two exact sections, okay. but they're labeled different. Another one you had to, but this one. Yeah, 3513. Put one three, and that is provides that when there's a vacancy. Correct. So. So we, moved for a meeting, special meeting on Thursday, August fifteenth at eight thirty a.m. Second. Correct. And that, and, and there's a motion made by Sandra Barger to hold a special meeting on August fifteenth at eight thirty a.m. And to give each side a half hour to make their arguments, correct? Right? Yes. And there was a second by Joyce Kill, member of Joyce Kill Pesca. Is there any other comments or concerns? I just want to say this. When this board is constituted, we are directed under law to act in a bipartisan manner. I understand this is a partisan issue, uh, but we're to try to fairly and objectively look at the law, look at whether or not someone complied with the law or not, and make a decision. And so we want to give everyone enough process, due process, to make sure that everything's being done uh, within the bounds of the law. I think we have the authority to call a special meeting uh, for these purposes, and that's what we're going to call the special meeting for. That'll be the only item on the agenda, besides the, of course, Pledge of Allegiance, other things. Okay, does anyone else have any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, would the assistant director call the roll, please? Ms. Berger? Yes. Mr. Beatrice? Yes. Mr. Ron? Yes. Ms. Gilpesta? Yes. All right, that motion passes. <clears throat> well, let me go back to my agenda. The director's report, persistent director's report. Do we have a report? No, we have a lot of other um, new business, so uh, we're just getting ready for the election, preparing. Okay. So I'd rather get to the new information. Take this is very nice that seasonal staff reminds us. This is very nicely done. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we have any unfinished business? I do. Uh, where are we at with our new building plans? From last week? Again, last week we were here? Yeah. Yes. Well, we don't have anything new from last week. Okay. What we talked about. I'm only one member. I only, I'm a only, I have no more voice than anyone else. But it is, one of my goals is to make this place easier to vote. <clears throat> right now, this is not the most conducive place to hold voting. And have we found about, because we're going to start voting in October, correct? Mm -hmm. Have we gotten arrangements to have a security gate put up? We did, and we got a price on it. We didn't order it yet. It was three fifty, so we didn't we didn't have anything in writing what we talked about last week. Greenwich. Are we gonna? Is that gonna be brought to the board? Mm -hmm. When when the next meeting? Well, <laughs> not Monday, but the next meeting after that, September third. And will that uh, allow enough time for them to install the gate? Well, you won't have to wait. You'll just vote on it like you do the other bills. No, that's not yes. my question. Yes. My question is, if we approve them putting up the gate, does that give them enough time to do the installation yes. so we're compliant with the law in a presidential election that it's a secured and locked voting area? Right, yes. The answer is yes. yes. Okay. Anything else under unfinished business? Under new business, uh, we have a discussion with the IT director, Jameson Mills. So Jameson is here today. 
Yeah. And he is going to talk with you about um, the technology to create the live feed that you requested. And he's going to talk to you about the camera upgrade for outside the ballot box. And just one mention about the upgrade to creating a new website in the future very soon after the presidential. So I'm just going to let Jameson explain what he wanted to explain. And you have in your packet the quotes. Where is it? Is this the project? Mm -hmm. Protect security. Yeah. yeah, there should be three uh, different documents. Mm -hmm. The uh, project proposal from uh, 42 Inc., the managed service agreement from 42 Inc., and then the uh, ProTech security packet regarding the security camera. So uh, if it's okay, I'll start with the project proposal from 42. Okay. Is um, that, is that this, this one? This one. Oh. And so, just before you go, Jameson is the IT director for Mahoning County. Did I say your title correctly, Jameson? Yes. So he oversees quite a bit, and he was quite helpful. Second. Hold on one second. I don't want to do this. Here it is. Here it is. Project proposal. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Uh, we had uh, 42 uh, Inc., they're a local company here out of Youngstown. Um, they came out and walked through this room that we're sitting in right now. Uh, 42 was chosen as a potential vendor due to the fact that they already uh, have installed a similar setup in the commissioner's hearing room at the courthouse. Uh, provides a Zoom feed for anyone to remotely connect to the public meetings. Uh, it also provides multiple cameras that will focus and zoom in on the speakers. Ceiling mounted microphones, the ability to record and save the meetings, uh, the ability to have uh, interactive chat enabled so people uh, from the public who might want to ask questions can do so in the chat. Uh, there's also uh, an ability for anyone remotely connected from the public to be unmuted during a meeting and allowed to ask questions that way, which were some of the things that uh, we spoke about uh, that would be uh, ideal for this type of situation. Uh, 42 also uh, suggested posting a few uh, television, uh, television monitors in this room so that if any exhibits are presented, if anyone's speaking through Zoom need to be seen, they can be seen on two televisions that are angled appropriately for the room. Uh, all this is reflected in their scope of work and their proposal uh, with the, uh, the amount listed there, the project proposal. Uh, you can get a good idea of what they're uh, aiming for by visiting the commissioner's hearing room in the courthouse. Uh, we use that as kind of a model. It's not the, um, the same exact situation because what the Board of Elections wanted is not exactly the same as what the commissioners have, but we took that as a jumping off point. And uh, after talking with uh, Melissa Wasco and, and getting some more information about what you all were interested in, uh, that's how they formulated their proposal. All right, a couple of questions. Sure. Um, does this have to be publicly bid, or is this considered professional services and we don't have to bid it? Yeah, this is professional services under the dollar amount necessary to require a uh, competitive bid. Okay. And do we have it in our budget to afford this? Yes, we do. Okay. Is there any chance that the state would chip in? Do we know if any grants are available for this? There are grants, but not for this. Okay. Yeah. So the public knows this board has been on a mission to make these the most open and accessible board meetings for the entire community. This board recognizes that many people in the community who want to participate can't make it down here at the times we have it for various reasons. So we came up with an idea to uh, live stream these and to allow people to uh, make public comment at the appropriate time to uh, be able to phone in or zoom in or just ask questions of their three minutes of public time. Now, this does not include uh, the camera for outside, correct? No, that's a separate proposal, the ProTech proposal. It's in a separate uh, attachment there. Okay. What we're speaking about now is only for the meetings in this room. Now, on election night, when all of the bags are being brought in, are we able to turn it on so people could see the workers doing the work? If that work is being done in this room, mm -hmm then yes, you'll have complete control of, over whether you launch a meeting or not, enable the cameras and microphones or not, make it public or not. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you how you would run these meetings. Uh, but because what happens is on election night, this room gets set up to accept 
the computer thumb drive from the precincts, okay. and then those are taken over there. And so I would like the public to see that sure. we're open and nothing's being hidden and no one's stuffing ballot boxes. The proposed system from 42 would accomplish that. I would recommend as well uh, the additional <coughs> attachment that was provided uh, under managed service agreement, this two-page attachment. This is their annual uh, maintenance, uh, tech support, and servicing contract that's separate and apart from the initial installation and purchase of the hardware. I would recommend that if the board uh, chooses to install this uh, product from 42 that you also choose their tech support because they're available. Like I said, they're a local company. They're available to come out on site if needed. They will provide all the necessary training for how to use the system. Uh, they'll tweak the audio and video to exactly where you want it. And they, they've been super helpful to us uh, in the IT department. I know the commissioners are very very glad to have their tech support assistance. So I would recommend this uh, yearly uh, service. It also updates the system. Should there be any security flaws with Zoom or any of the hardware, they will come out and immediately update and patch that. So this yeah. is actually a Zoom meeting. It is not a Facebook Live. It would integrate with Whatever. Zoom handles all the behind the scenes for the meeting. Right. And then if you wanted to publish that live on Facebook or any other social, do there's that live stream. Yeah, there's integration with this system to those social media platforms. Okay. And 42 would be able to help us. That's new to me as well. So we kind of lean on our vendors who have experience in this. They'll be able to help us with that. I have, go ahead, Joyce, you had a question. Yes, this equipment transportable. Yes. We do move. We yes. can take this equipment with us. Yeah, it will be wired into this room specifically, but nothing prevents all the pieces to be removed, moved to another location, and wired there. I have a question for the system director. What cameras currently are in this building? You mean for us? Yes. We have about 44, 44 maybe? Yeah, at least yeah. That are ours. That are ours. Yes. And the public cannot access those, correct? The only one the public can access is the ballot box. We have a live streaming for 30 days straight that they can go on any time and watch what's going on with the ballot box outside. And there is a camera on the safe where the ballots are kept, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And where, how long is that data stored on those cameras? Uh, per the Secretary of State, what did you say? It's indefinitely. We keep them on long disk, don't we? We always have hard drives. We've always kept them on hard drives before. You mean back at, down at the location downtown? Downtown, yes. The the sure. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Keep them on hard drive. So if anyone were to question any of our workers regarding anything doing with the vault or the safe is, we can go back and verify the veracity of any accusations made. We can. But those cameras aren't public, and the reason Correct. they're not public is for security reasons. No, we so understand that. So that people know our security process. And there is a directive, and I don't know the number off the top of my head, that came out maybe two, two and a half years ago about which ones we have to release for public records and which ones we don't. Um, if I remember correctly, we don't have to release the ones from inside the vaults um, and the tap room. But we always can go back and check and look at camera footage to make sure things are the way they should be. We have used them in court cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and is the there, case. would there be a prohibition for us to live stream the processing of ballots as they come in? Could you check that for us? Yes, I'll check that. Because what happens is when the trucks come in, all of the boxes are brought into this room. We have workers that are checking things, uh, cutting the zip ties, uh, taking the ballots to the safe. And if, if, if there's not a prohibition against that, and it's not breaching any security protocols, it would be my position in a presidential election, especially this one, to let the public see how their ballots are processed and let them see how everything's done. And that's just the board thinks that that would be a bad idea. I'd have to see what the Secretary of State yeah. feels about that because it's yeah. some things are allowed and some things aren't. If I might, um, the proposal from 42 only covers uh, what we discussed about this, board meetings. So if the configuration of the room is different, this camera system may not pick up precisely what you're looking for. So if you definitely wanted to do that and we determined that you could live stream ballot counting, we may want to have 42 come back and just verify that we can do everything we need for that purpose. So, so I would ask the director and assistant director to find out whether or not it is permissible for us to live stream the processing of everything 
that comes into this room on election night. And if we're allowed to do it, well, the board will take it up and discuss it. But if there's a directive, does the Secretary of State's representative know of any directives or non-directives about what I just said? Not off the top of my head. I'll research it also. Okay. Okay. So do we um, want to... Jameson has a little more fun. Oh, I'm sorry, Jameson. That's okay. Go ahead. Uh, Can we just deal with one thing at a time? Because they're two different. Oh, certainly. Right? Yeah. Well, one's a... One's a um, <clears throat> Well, well the, the one's for the boardroom Zoom meetings and the um, managed service agreement. Does that cover both cameras or just this in here? So everything you receive from 42 Inc. is related to the boardroom that we're in presently only. That would be for the Zoom meetings, the live streaming, all that. So those are the two quotes you got from 42, the project proposal and the managed service agreement. And how long before it could be up and running? Uh, they were unable to give me a precise date, but I asked them if you could make it happen before November 5th, and they said certainly. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty nice. W without, without guaranteeing it, they um, stated that during the month of September, they should have an opening to come and install. It okay. all depends on getting the equipment from the vendors. All right, so the uh, chair will now recognize a, <coughs> does anyone else have any questions? The chair will now recognize a motion to uh, purchase the equipment to live Zoom the Board of Election meetings. Is there such a motion? So move. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve 42 systems in integration and the, to, um, for the Zoom rooms and the um, maintenance for the, for the year. Okay. $2,526.40. And the equipment cost is $29,997.63. And uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Joyce Kiel Pesta. Now, I just want to make sure that we absolutely have the money in the budget. We do. And does the board agree that this is a wise use of taxpayers' money? Yes. So they could, people that can't physically be here can still participate and watch how we handle the most important thing that they have in this country. Anyone disagree with that? Mm -hmm. I think it's a good use of the taxpayers' money. I think it's good that people will be able to watch these meetings live and be able to participate remotely uh, because a lot of people, quite frankly, don't drive, have transportation problems. They should have as much say as people that have cars and transportation. So is there any other questions, comments, or concerns? I guess one other question. These Zoom meetings aren't going to be limited to time no. wise? Okay. No. Because sometimes with Zooms, they purchase a, a Zoom package that's only 30 minutes, so mm -hmm. it's not limited to anything. No. Okay, well, thank you. And then mm -hmm. the control will be someone on this panel will control the unmute and mute buttons? Yeah, we'll discuss that but during the installation and setup process, how that works. It's a touch panel controller. Someone will have yeah, to. Everyone should be muted until it's time for public they are. comment. And you never really have to unmute them. If you, if you choose not to, you can direct all questions to the chat, and they can be moderated by someone in the room. Okay. It's all controllable by you. Right. Okay. I noticed in this uh, the client, Chris Rackersey, Chris is all up on, up on that. Well, you know, Sorry. we would never have a technical meeting with anybody without having Chris. <laughs> so, and so yeah. Chris is a conduit <coughs> between the um, county and us when we buy anything that's of technology. Cameras and computers and printers. And he was present during the walkthrough. He's, yeah. he's well, well, well aware of this. I don't think he could sign it until we approve it. Right. Correct? Right. Correct. All right. Uh, is there any more comments, questions, or concerns? I just heard from uh, my deputy director there is no prohibition to have on election night cameras on the processing of the ballot. Okay. Hamilton, Hamilton County wants to do that if you want to refer to them and see how they do it. Okay. okay. Yes. Can I add then when we do the installation of this, uh, when you have 42 come out, let them know the situation. We'll make sure the cameras are set up properly. I think one Cover camera back there just shooting the table. Yeah, should cover the whole room. We'll make sure. Because we put long tables down the center of the room. So, so just to be clear, clear the ballots up. aren't in here. Mm -hmm. it's just yeah. sticks are in here. Yeah, the memory sticks come in here, the yellow bags come in here, the memory sticks are then taken down to the tabulation room. And then anywhere that there is a ballot, however, throughout the entire, our, our whole, whole operation here, there is a camera. 
ballots are always under camera when they come in through that long hallway or whether they come this way. The provisionals go to vault two, and then the ballots go to the vault one. So you may want to check on this, but I think when I was director, we could actually have uh, like the closed circuit TV, like the sheriff's do it. We could have parts of the showing parts of our cameras. Some of our cameras are not, not in this system. Not in this system. Our, our system that the IT put in, the IT department put in for us. We, they told us that if Tom and I wanted to watch what was going on in the office, like the rules, you know, whatever was going on in the office, we could watch that on a closed circuit TV, like the sheriff has. Well, yeah, so, <coughs> and so our board deputy watches all the cameras all day. Right. We're able to see it. That's what you're talking about? That's what I'm talking that about. They're able to look in the ballot. election night, I don't understand why we couldn't do the same thing. As well, the you're, you're telling me as a director that we can't do that, correct? I'm saying we should look into it. We should look into it. Okay. For sure. I mean, I don't want to live stream it, but if we can shoot a camera outside or have a closed circuit TV outside, and to show the activity? Yes. Because you just want that, like, look, this is what I do here. This is right. the activity. Yeah. And so we can have a Yes. Do, I think we can do that now. Okay, well, let's find out if it's okay to do that. Okay. And that we do it. All right. All right, so now. We have a motion and a second. So yeah. we need to vote on this. Oh, okay. For, for the 42 proposal, Correct. right? Yes. <laughs> so, would the, anyone else have any comments or concerns? Hearing none, would the direct, assistant director call the roll, please? Ms. Parker? Yes. Mr. Beatrice? Yes. Mr. Ron? Yes. Ms. Gelta? Yes. James Sierra? Okay, thank you. So the second packet you have from ProTech Security, um, this is a, in addition to the camera that is already in existence under the carport pointed at the uh, ballot box, um, it was requested that we look into getting a camera that was capable of reading and storing license plates that drive through to the ballot box. So ProTech came and visited the site. In their packet, you see the proposed location of the new camera that will be in addition to our current uh, system. Uh, it will be under the carport, uh, pointed in the direction of the ballot box, and this camera is specifically used for license plate reading. Uh, in fact, that will be its sole purpose. It will not take the place of the camera that streams the ballot box. This will strictly be capturing and recording license plates that pass through and access that ballot box. Uh, every license plate that passes through will be recorded in a software package that we already use here at the county called WiseNet Wave. You can see a demonstration of that in this image here. So it automatically views them, records them, and catalogs them. And we can set it up to keep these license plates for as long as we want. This is only accessible to employees of the Board of Elections. This is not accessible to the public or anyone else. Strictly for Board of Elections, should there now, be. Wasn't there a new law passed that we have to have a camera on the ballot box? So there Which is currently a camera there, and it does, that's the live feed camera, and yes it was, it was two years ago, and it, you know, the, the citizens of the county can go and look anytime they want on the computer and see what's going on in that ballot box. This would be in addition to this. Yes. And this purpose of having this is for whose purpose? Employees of the board? So when he says employees, then it would be only whoever's given access of the board. It would probably just be Tom and myself. Okay. And it really, that's just a security measure. A lot of the citizens groups were asking for more clarity on that ballot box. They felt they could not see the cars. They could not see when they went on a live feed. How could we even know who was at that box? Um, because we couldn't read the license plate. So it's not for harm. It's actually for good. And if we did ever have a problem at the ballot box, we would be able to pull that data and know who was there and who put what in the ballot box. Yeah, so David, but, David, isn't it a law that only uh, police officers or law enforcement can check the driver's license, license plates? Well, Joyce, I wish I could tell you, but with the internet, you could probably find out what my waist size is. Okay. Where I buy my suits. Or on the radio on okay. Thursday. Okay, or on the radio on Thursday. I mean, I'm sure there's some software out there somewhere in the World Wide Web that if you put in someone's license plate, it's going to tell you whose car that is. That doesn't tell you who's driving, but it's just going to tell you whose car it is. Right, right. But it, if so, I mean, I wouldn't know about that, but I understand the question. And I think that um, that is true. We would never look up, like, we as a board will never look up someone's license plate. If there were any kind of accusations or any kind of issues, we would send it to the sheriff's department. Yeah. Like, somebody if somebody, somebody called yeah. and there was threats or if there was right. somebody put 100 ballots in there, right. we know as a board that that doesn't happen. It was just to um, calm some people's concerns, frankly. But this is for our use only. 
Right. And that's, if we needed to check a, some a license plate or a car, it would go to the sheriff's department. It would not go to yeah, the it's public. It's not a public record. It's right. not a public record. I mean, we'd have to get some clarity on that. So maybe you don't want to vote on it today. While he was just bringing the proposal, so we would know what we have the option to do. Well, so I prior to implementing, sure we should that, get clarity. Well, hold on a second. It, August, I mean October sixth is when we start voting, right? Right. Eighth. Eighth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we were to postpone this, does that give them enough time to install this? Yes. Okay. According to my understanding, they only need a few weeks. All right. So does the... Does so we can push this to the September meeting to decide. Or we could get the clarification by Monday. Monday. We could get it by Monday. We could vote on Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see if we can get a clarification by Monday. Okay. And this way, if someone says, well, at this time someone dropped off 100 ballots, we can go back and look at all the cameras and find out if, in fact, that happened. Right. Because we, and we want to be clear that we actually know every day how many ballots were put in there. We scan them in. It's, it's not a secret to us. But if for some reason someone made that accusation and we went out to the ballot box and there was something in there, we would be able to find who or what. Right? Yeah, can I clarify? If need be. Go ahead. Just clarify, this camera specifically is for license plates. So this is in conjunction with the already existing camera that would see activity of people outside of the car. Well, it, it's enough of a breadcrumb for anyone that wanted to do an investigation, Correct. for anyone that would make accusations that someone was doing something wrong. Correct? And it's not accessible by any persons or entities outside of this physical location who have the security clearance to do so based on the system security settings. Okay. Not accessible to the public in any way, shape, or form. And it wouldn't be to the entire staff. Well, thank, thank you. you thank you for coming, Mr. Mills. Of course. Once you're asking that, you want to be open to the public, don't they? The ones who have asked for this every meeting, aren't they the ones that want to make it open to the public? Well, I couldn't speak for them. I can only say that we wouldn't allow it. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, they, can, they can look at the existing camera we have now. Yeah, but right. they can't no, read they people's can't. plates. No. no. Okay. Correct? Correct. 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 All right, and is there anything else that you have to propose? I think that was it, Jameson, <laughs> except that Jameson is going to help us after the presidential election build a new website um, and, and get a vendor, and we're going to work on that down the road. Great. Yeah, we partner with a company called Civic Plus that handles most of the county websites, the prosecutors, uh, sheriffs. Uh, they do a really good job, and uh, we'd like to discuss with them first, since they're familiar with the county and what we do. Um, and then, of course, if it needs to go out for bids, we'll talk about that. But we're going we're gonna to start looking at that after the general election. We don't want to make any major changes before. Right? I was told by someone running for office that they went to our website and that nothing was updated since 2018. I was completely flabbergasted by that. I'm glad a concerned citizen brought that to my attention. But have we updated that, or is that going to be in part of the new proposal? Um, halfway through getting ready to update it, Chris is working. So everything will be up to date. Mm -hmm. So anyone could go on our website and get past election results without going to the Secretary of State. That's right. Okay. Um, I would like the Director and Deputy Director to investigate and maybe some of the websites that are already up and running, like yeah. Franklin County is very good, Cuyahoga is very, very good, and Hamilton is good. So if we could look at some of those and see what they offer. You know, ours is a little limited through Civic Plus. You know, it's has been. Joyce, how old is that website? Do you know it's five, six years dated by five or six years? I mean, so many leaps and bounds happen yeah. so quickly, yes. maybe they've upped their hand yes. a little bit. There's right? quite a bit more Get, available than there okay. was five years ago. So. And we still have our, our app. Correct. Yeah, and the app is through Civic Plus as well. Right. And the app is excellent. The app is yeah, the everyone app. loves that app. I love the app. So we just got to get it's the website and caught up to the app, really. <laughs> it was a great idea, Joyce, David. <laughs> Joyce won the award for it. I did. She got to go on a stage and perform this. For the newest innovation of doing something. And she up there and smiled and said, I thought of this all my life. <laughs> so you know the feeling, huh? Yeah, yeah I kind of do. All right. All right. So. Now we're going to go to seasonal staff and new hire packet. Yeah, I, I just, um, and, and our Annie, Thank you, Jameson. Well, thank you, Jameson. Appreciate you so much. This is very good. David. 
And he's amazing, as everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she created this seasonal yeah, package. Yeah, uh, Annie puts a lot of detail in everything that she does, and she does a little bit of everything. And I really wanted to show it to the board. Yes. Um, excellent, excellent. Just because so much detail goes into so many things that we do that we don't discuss, and that's okay. I just wanted to share with you her detail and what we do tell our seasonal staff and how we do. Like and I walk around here. the back page where they have to sign and say they received the package and yes. they know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's excellent, Annie. Excellent. Thank you. It's mm -hmm. really good. We have dress code in here. Clocking in and clocking out. <laughs> <laughs> and you see she has draft on there because do you want them to vote, right? Oh, okay. Um, well, what else is Shall we let go? I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, can I? Can we just hold on one second? Much paper for a paperless society. We've got tons of paper. Here it is. Yes, we did that first. So I just wanted to share it with you, and I hope each meeting we could share with you some of these nuggets that we do because these are things that you know, maybe less glamorous, but that are important. Yeah, great, great. And so Annie, we thank you. I don't think we have to vote on this. No, because no. we might need to make changes. Yeah. yeah. But Annie is. Excellent. She's just the rock star. She is. Oh, well, Thank so. you. She, is. So she brought her expertise to the board. So. Couldn't do it without is. Annie. Actually, we couldn't do it without any of our group, but we do really appreciate these details and uh, you our staff. Have staff. Have a great staff. We have an awesome staff. Didn't like, we have a new hire, too, that we have to approve or not? No. We didn't already. No. Yeah. Well, I think you read it as a new hire packet, so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where you got the new And hire actually, packet. our last new hire is coming up on a whole year. Marissa will be here in the year of October. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Because Splana got an email about a new hire. Melissa, so there is no prohibition against having a camera read license plates. I okay. just got that information. So Thank, you. That. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Perfect. Is on top of it today. So do you guys want to revisit that topic since there's no, or do you want something from the prosecutors and sheriffs? I would like something from the prosecutors and sheriffs. Okay. 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 Yeah, because it's for our use. It's not for public use. It's not for the group that asked us. They don't like the camera that's, right. in, that's not reading license plate. Well, you can't by law read the license plate. And actually, and actually, actually it's possible, candy. it's also possible all of our other cameras, the Sheriff's Department oversees those cameras. And if we need anything from those cameras, we reach out to them and say, hey, I need Friday at 3 to 4 o'clock to need full footage. We probably could set that camera up in the same way so that even the board doesn't have access until it goes through the Sheriff's Department. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Because we've actually gone down to the Sheriff's Office and reviewed footage. Yeah, to keep it more, mm -hmm. even more secure. Mm -hmm. So. My concern is Sandy's concern that people who are just, you know, <coughs> mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> no. we just have to make sure it's yeah. not a public record. Right. I don't want that to be clarification. Right. Yes, and I don't want people being harassed. Right. Right. That they dropped off. Ah. <laughs> well, that was a people... fear in the first place. Yeah. Like, you want what? Yeah. Um, but you'd be surprised just lately how no. much. You are on camera every day. It is everywhere. It is shocking and it is scary how much all of us are on camera every day. They have pole cameras up. They got all kind of cameras everywhere. I mean, you cannot not be on camera. You right. go from your house to anywhere and not a camera somewhere catch you. Mm -hmm. You like your camera a lot in front of the courthouses too, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can see my house. It looks like Fort Knox. <laughs> All right, so anything for the good of the order, public comments? All right, now we were talking about a Monday meeting, but it says here the next scheduled meeting is September 3rd. So Monday is the special meeting that we have to have on September 3rd is our regular board. Okay, so we are going to have a special meeting. Well, first we're going to do one on Thursday. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday right. August 15th. So I make a motion that we have the special meeting August 15th at 8.30 a.m. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Right. Oh, that we already, we already did that. Correct. Yeah. But that's not, so, yeah. 
Right. So do we have to have Thursday another meeting, meeting on Monday? Following no, I kept thinking Monday because I thought it was going to be originally. We just talked don't mind me. It's Thursday for the special Thursday. meeting. Yes. Okay, we've already passed the motion. September 3rd for our regular board meeting. Okay. Correct. And so let's uh, have a motion, or did we already vote on these meeting dates? We, we already voted yeah. on Yeah, we did. Yeah, the regular, you all voted at the beginning of the year. Yeah, okay. special, you voted earlier. So the next scheduled meeting of the Mahoney County Board of Elections is set for Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024 at 4 p.m. in the boardroom of the Mahoney County Board of Election Offices, 345 Oak Hill Avenue, Youngstown, Ohio, 44502. It, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. There's a motion made by member Joyce Kilpesta to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bob. Aren't you glad we're adjourning? <laughs> Is there any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, this meeting is now adjourned. Ready to new <laughs> task over here. Ms. Barger? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> the meeting is now adjourned.